everybody, welcome back to Flames Pyro Art for Beginners. Uh, a little while ago, I was doing an experiment on trying to create a, a horse portrait. And just recently, I re-picked it back up. And so, I thought we would have a little look at the horse's tail together and see how we can... Uh, create a long flowing tail on a horse. Now off my reference picture I can see that there's like a, the main side bit of the tail and then there's an underneath darker uh, hair to it which is much blacker all this part is like an underneath and this is all the main flowing top coat of hair if you like so we're using the extra small spatiator and I've got my setting quite high at just over three which is burning pretty hot for this size of pen Now obviously we don't just really want to just blacken the whole of the underneath of the mane, you know, you want to try and give it some sort of detail to it. But we can look for opportunities to Push some areas deeper and explore them opportunities. We're right up at the absolute base of this tail will be dark. Because it's at its thickest point here, so right up under there is the darkest as the light is hitting all this top coat underneath here. It's not getting hit at all. So again, the far edge. tail wants to go darker still really to push it further back and we'll get as tight as we possibly can because if you think about it in real life there isn't an empty gap between the horse and the tail as a we need to get as tight to the body as possible. And I suppose if we follow this back, a strand of hair, a big clump. When, when doing hair like this, it's all really about just opening your mind and just experimenting and seeing what patterns you can come up with because hair doesn't have to be exactly, you know, to the strand, you, you know, it's not we don't have to ever go into that detail where every single strand of hair is accounted for. Like Valerie from Drawing With Fire uh, once told me that hair isn't about 
individual strands it's all about flowing different tonal shades I've done a few pursuits on how to create human hair. That took me down a, quite a long path. I think I've unlocked some of the mysteries of it, but yet to fully test it out. I think we may switch over to the coarse hair pen and give that a whirl and see how we go with this instead. This is what I've done to make most of the body of the horse. I've used this pen in the little flicks to create the coarse short hair. That is covering the horse's body, isn't it? But you can also use them for more long flowing locks of hair. It's more, so we say, it glides better than the extra small space shader. And that's what I'm looking for is a smoother glide. I don't want to be fighting the pen. And this one turns corners and you can make turn it just turn so easily with it. If you haven't got a pen shape like this, a coarse hair pen, then it is well worth investing in one. There's a multitude of things you can do with them. So I said we know this is the side of the top. So all under here, I'm just going to try and give it some attention to detail. I went putting curls in. We go darker at the bend of the curl. And then we gradually lighten the tone as we come out of the curl. And if you think about if this is a whole curled area, all of it wants pushing back. There's a hole of this clump, and the furthest edge of it wants to be the darkest. And then we just follow it out. 
and that's how it's that blend of tonal values. That can give the hair the shape. I've got this pen set at three and a half a minute, which is fairly hot for the pen. As some of you know, I'm not a high heat burner. I do like to study in. Try and make the most of learning off the projects I do. I suppose today's lesson really can be about this coarse hairpin. You may have one in your, I know in your wire tip, ones where you screw the sides off and pull the tips off and you can interchange them. I think you do get a pen very similar to this in them sort of kits. And this is what they use for. Because when we buy them, kits of like likes of Amazon and stuff you get this like multitude of tips don't you you get like 10 or 15 different tips or more and there's no instruction manual as to what tip does what it's like here you go here's a load of tips and a unit away you go you know no one tells you what tip is best suited for what job and that was something I had to just learn for myself was you find which pens you're happiest with and you pretty much stick with the like the stock three or four pens As you start expanding your range of projects and subject matter you may need to utilize some of those other tips to help make the job easier Like to look at it as if it's it's all like trial and error you know if something doesn't look right then it's not a waste of time it's a good lesson learned that right i know not to do it that way next time because that doesn't look right So even in what you may class as your failures or you're not happy with, you've learned something from them. And we're always learning. You see how easy a curl you can make with this pen. I mean, you can keep it touched down. We'll have 
a little look at some of the top. Now this wants to be a lighter tone than this because the sun is getting onto this tail. But again, where we have the curls is where we put a darker sort of like U shapes, arcs. Gradually coming out of the dip and off to a lighter shade and you just remove your pen quickly and lightly over the surface. You don't need to change the temperature of your unit as long as you're just barely touching down. In horse areas, a lot of clumps of hair. So what I would say was, would the experiment put some folds in there and some darker tones and light tones, put some curls in, maybe some crisscrosses, you know where hair falls underneath itself, that may come into play. This whole area here is a swish of the tail. Just marking it off. You can almost see the flow of it, can you? It flows down, dips in the swish, and then comes back up and falls over again. Try and visualise in your mind how you want it to look. If you can do that then it's just about having the patience to try and make that imagination you've just made into the portrait you're working on. How long have I been running? So I'm already at 18 minutes. Have a little longer this the swish of the tail. And when we're doing the burn strokes with the hair, we want to follow the direction. You know, when it's dark there, we don't want to burn dark downwards. Follow the flow with your pen. Let's see if we can get this swish in in this lesson with this coarse hairpin.
this particular horse the the mane and tail are black but as we know it's very difficult to go black with pyrography without burning the wood we don't ever really want to char the wood that's when it you know, it starts beginning to look ugly once we char char it and singe it. That's why layering is a very important part of pyrography. As we go over and over an area, we gradually build the darkness I'm sure some of you may have found out when you've been doing dark backgrounds like I say a large area of a dark background it's it takes some to doing doesn't it down here I'm going to start coming out of the dip I'm also going to start falling away Pushing that hair down. Start bringing the light tones up. Just by pressing down ever so gently and moving quickly, you will get the lighter shady. As you can see there, it's very light. I'm moving quickly and barely touching the surface. And has to go more.
which is where the blending now begins to come into effect. This is where it takes the time of gradually going from the darkest and ever so slightly just shading lighter, lighter, lighter to the lightest point. Once you set off on a journey of trying to create more and more realism, find yourself searching for these uh, blending tones Here's where it dipped. Even fast flicks up this curve. Time to run. I'm conscious of time. We've done half an hour, we're going to do another 15. And most of you won't probably watch this all the way through. And then what I'll do is, after we get to 45 minutes, I will switch it to time lapse. And you can see the speeded up version of me sat creating this tail. I haven't decided for this front piece. I have got the reference picture. I think I'm going to leave, see, here. I'm going to leave the light casting more not so much of the dip move them strokes in the upward curl
this pen as well, you can just flick. And coming out the other side, it's a little different. You need to leave the lighter patch as the top of the curl hits the sun again. So this side is all about blending from the darkest upwards as it curls up. You can put a few darker tones, you know, gaps in there where a big clump of hair is. So you've got a gap in it and there's a darker recess. And this curl we're putting in would be the same for human hair. It's exactly the same process when you're adding curls. This tail starts dropping off and towards the end of the tail it all starts you know going off in different directions in more detail as you get to the end of it the main like trunk of the hair hasn't got as much detail it's what you'll find when you get to the bottom And that's it, just take your time, just find those tonal values, just and then blend them out and just see what effects it gives you. And hopefully, once we've finished. Darkening this up, we'll have a nice swish in this tail.
just mess about for hours and hours on these sorts of uh, parts of projects. I could just sit there all day, just searching and experimenting and see what effects take shape. Map as it starts creeping its way back up, blending lighter. So we'll just go over the key points. I know it doesn't seem we've done much. Let's put a swish in the tail or any curl in the hair. We go darker on the bend. Then as we go up, we start blending from dark. Just gradually going lighter out of it on the other side of the curve there's a high point which will be the, like the lightest and then the hair begins to drop off again out the other side of the curl and if you can find the right blend of tones you will have a really wonderful looking curl in the hair so that is a little look at how we can put curls into hair and discuss some of the key points and things that my mind is thinking about already as I'm beginning to tackle this tail. We'll time lapse the rest of the session and we'll see if it was a success or not. As you can see, there's a long way to go. This is the underneath. But it's the same again when we're doing bend. Darkest point is at the ape is at the very bottom of the bend. And it gradually gets lighter as it comes out. I hope you've maybe taking away a few tips from today's little look into creating curls and horses tails and it will also transfer to human hair and I'll now switch you over to time lapse so you don't have to sit through hours of me rambling away as I look to create this tail and we'll see what it looks like for you guys in about a minute or two from now with a time lapse as you can say it's so fast 
thank you for watching today. Happy pyroing everybody on this Sunday. Hopefully you're having a day with your wood burners and a day of rest. And I look forward to spending some time with you again very soon. Well, thank you very much. Don't forget to leave me a like or a comment or hit subscribe to the channel. We'll look at many different aspects of pyrography over the coming months and years. And I hope you can join me on the journey. And we'll all walk this path together and see where it takes us. Okay, have a great Sunday guys. Thanks for watching. Take care. Bye.